Dear friends, continuing with our chapter on motion, we are going to today learn more about laws of motion. The first part of this topic is force. Last week, we learned more about differentiating between rest and motion. What is rest versus what is motion? In your room, sitting in your room, you see a fan. If the fan is in off position, the blades are at its own place. But the moment I switch on, the blades move. So, whenever a body changes its position with respect to its surroundings, the body is said to be in motion. What was required for a body to be in motion? Force. Let's take one more example. Suppose we go to drop our visitor on the station. Bodhavali station, you all have come to see me off. I'm going home, hometown. So the moment I get into the train, the train is at rest. I take my seat. You see me. It's at rest. So the teacher is at rest. The train is at rest. Rest with respect to whom? With respect to observer. You're the observer. Train and the teacher, both are the objects. Both of us are at rest. Why? Because the position of the body does not change with respect to immediate surroundings. But when the train starts moving, what happens? The position with respect to observer, that is with you, changes continuously. What is required? What was required here for the train to be in motion? Along with the train, the person seated inside to be in motion? Force. Force is what enable the train to be set into motion. So we know more about this physical quantity, force. What is this physical quantity? It enables us to change the state that is from state of rest to state of motion or conversely from state of motion to bring back an object back to state of rest, force is required. What is the other word for state? Inertia. So you can also define force is that physical quantity which changes bodies which is an inertia of rest to inertia of motion or conversely from inertia of motion to bring it back to inertia of rest force is required. Next take two more examples. Here is a pen. The pen when force is applied what can I be doing to it? I can be breaking it. Conversely, suppose I have some other object such as clay in my hand. Applying force to it, you are making a clay statue. So what enabled me to give shape to that clay? What enabled me to change the shape or size of the clay is force. What enabled me not to change the shape of this blackboard? On applying force, force, nothing changes, it is as it is. Unbalanced force can cause it to break. But right now, application of force onto a board does not change the size or shape. But application of force onto a piece of clay can enable it to change its size or shape. Why? Because the intermolecular spacing between the molecules can be changed. So what is done with application of force onto a pen or a piece of clay? You are changing its shape or size. Take another example, say rubber band. On applying force to a rubber band, what can be done? I can stretch it, elongate, withdrawal of force. It comes back to its original shape size. So. We say the rubber band or clay are non-rigid objects. There is pen or the blackboard. They fall under rigid objects. Thus, force led me to, enabled me to change in size or shape. What was done? Rubber band elongation. Clay ko shape diya. Put statue banaya. Thus, we define force as that physical quantity which can change either the state or can change size or shape of a body.
Next, let us see the kinds of forces. Contact force and the other kind of force that we learn is non-contact force. Force caused in a body. See the definition, this is the key word. The force caused in a body when the two bodies are in physical contact is called as contact force. Whereas the force experienced by bodies when not in physical contact is called as con non-contact force. What do we mean by that? Take examples. First one, suppose the book which is kept on this table. Which are the forces acting on it? Come on, tell me. Yes, the weight of the body acting vertically downwards. What is the force applied by the table on the book is referred to as the normal reaction force. So this force, this force is experienced by the body by coming in contact with the surface. So normal con uh, reaction force is referred to as a contact force. Next, here is an object which with a certain force is being moved at a particular speed in one direction. Check it out, here is an object with a certain speed, I am trying to move it along the surface as it slides, as it glides between the object and the surface in a direction opposite to its motion is the force referred to as frictional force. So where did the force, why did the body experience a force, what was the cause of force? Because the two are in physical contact. So frictional force too is an example of contact force. Next, take a thread, piece of stone and suspend it from a rigid support. Tell me students, which are the forces which will be acting on the body? Which are the two forces acting on this piece of stone which is hung from a thread? The weight of the body, the force due to gravity acting vertically downwards and there is a contact force in the strain. What do we call as tension force? Kaise pata chalta hai? Suppose, take this thread. Just let it be hung from the rigid support. You will find it loose. The moment I tie a stone to that piece of thread and it is hung, how is it? Topped, tight because of the contact force in it. The moment if I were to just cut this thread, what would happen? The stone would fall down and there will be a force with which the string will be seen just little bit moving upwards. The tension in the force. What type of force is it? It too falls under contact force. Reaction force, the frictional force, the tension force. Let us see few more. Check it out. These two. Suppose there is this object marble and lightly I am trying to hit the other marble which is stationary. What will happen? As this marble collides with the other marble, head on collision, you shall see the other marble also moving, being put into state of motion, the forces between them on colliding is what is called as collision force. Kaise raste pe chalte chalte? Imagine at the signal, my car is stationary. Someone just comes from behind, bicycle and tries to apply the brake only after touching. What will happen? That person will feel a rebound force. It is sort of head-on collision. Clear? So again, the collision force is classified under contact force. One more, let us take one more example. Here is a spring, normal spring, pen me se nikala wa spring. Where am I tied it? To a rigid support on the wall. 
wall, hook, spring. I am trying to apply a force to it. What kind of force? Pull. What am I trying to do? Trying to stretch the spring. Upon leaving, what will happen? Will the spring come back to its original size? Yes, it will come back to its original shape and size because of a force referred to as restoring force. Next, this force in the spring which brings it back to its original shape and size is referred to as force exerted experienced by the spring. So again a quick recap, contact forces are those forces caused in a body due to physical contact namely reaction force, frictional force, tension force, collision force, force experienced by the spring. Whereas take the examples of gravitational force or magnetic force and electrostatic force. What are these three forces? Gravitational force always a freely falling body body falling from a height where does it fall onto the ground with a third why because it is attracted due to force due to gravity this gravitational force is there any contact between that body and the ground earth no what kind of force is it gravitational force a non-contact force force experienced by a body being not in contact similarly two magnets what happens Unlike poles, kiti duri se, they attract, like poles, repel, non-contact force or electrostatic force. Upon rubbing of two objects, one becomes positively charged, the other becomes negatively charged and then they attract, what kind of force is that? Electrostatic. So this too is a non-contact force. Here is a brief overview of this subtopic force under chapter 3, laws of motion. Read them, practice diagrams. Shall I meet you again in my next sessions, continuing with our web sessions. See you again next time. Thank you.